Hi everyone, welcome back to our final lesson on integration by parts. Now in my earlier videos we worked on the setting up of some exam questions. Today we're going to look at the exceptions that arise when defining U and DV dx. Now this would normally occur when dealing with the natural log lnx. Now under normal circumstances we define U by the expression involving x to power n. However, if ln x is an expression in your question that requires integration by parts, we now need to define ln x with the letter u. Even if the other expression, the neighboring expression, involves x to the power n. Let me just show you. I've got two questions here, x squared ln x and cos x ln x, both needed integrating with respect to x. As both questions involve ln x as an expression, automatically that becomes u. The x squared and the cos x in this case will then automatically become dv dx. In other words, they're the expressions that would need to be integrated. Okay, also bear in mind that the ln x, when you differentiate ln x, we get 1 over x, and that's what we need to do when we look at our first exam question. So this is our first one. We need to integrate x to the power minus 2, ln x, with respect to x. We have a definite integration here, as you can see, limits between 1 and 2. So let's start off with u. We know that u would equal to ln x, as we mentioned earlier. So dv dx will be our other expression, in this case, x to the power minus 2. We then differentiate du dx, in other words, 1 over x. And in this case, to get v, we need to integrate x to the power minus 2, and that would automatically become x to the power minus 1 with a minus sitting outside. Now, just before we start to substitute into our parts formula, just look at v. The way v looks, minus x power minus 1, it may be easier to write that as negative 1 over x. By writing as a reciprocal, it makes it so much easier when we multiply. So, let's begin our parts formula. We need to integrate x minus 2 ln x dx and we start off with uv. So ln x times minus 1 over x can become minus ln x over x. Minus by default because we now need to multiply these two. However, I see another, another negative here. So that becomes plus integration. These two, when you get the product of that, you get 1 over x squared. And again, at this stage of your mass, you can write x to the power minus 2. That's going to be easier to integrate in a moment. We can now drop our negative ln x over x, and the integration of x to the power minus 2 will become x to the power minus 1 with a minus. Okay, so let's tie that up. We get negative ln x over x minus 1 over x and we put that in our brackets and that is now ready to input our 2 and 1. Start of the upper limit with the 2 we get negative ln 2 over 2. Now you could write that as negative half ln 2. The format actually is not really important minus 1 over 2, we're putting the 2 into there, and before we put a lower limit in, really important, in all cases, always put a negative and a bracket because of sign changes. Now put a 1 in, our lower limit, we get negative ln 1 over 1. Now be mindful before we move on, we know that ln 1 for later on is going to be 0, so that's going to be easier in our next line minus 1 over 1 is just 1. And to finish that off, we can write negative 
half ln2, which is this one, negative half, we know that ln1 can go, negative and negative is add 1, and just to finish this off, we can now write minus half add 1 is same as half, we get half minus half ln2, and that should be the answer to our question. Feel free to rewind, pause when necessary. It's quite an important one to understand. Once you're happy with it, we can now move on to example two. Now this is integration by parts. Now at a glance, I can only see one expression here, ln x. It's an unusual one because most people know the differentiation of ln x being one over x, but when asked a question, What's the integration of 1 over x? Sorry, integration of ln x. We need to do it through parts. So, ln x dx, one expression only. Integration by parts require two expressions. So, slightly odd, as I said, ln x has exceptions. We can write this as 1 multiplied by ln x dx. Now here I've got two parts. I've got the 1 and the ln x. Here we can now open up the parts. So because I've got ln x here, I can define u as ln x. And even though the other part of the question does not involve x, we can still define dv dx as our constant 1. So we now need to differentiate du dx as normal. So du dx would equal to 1 over x. And v, in other words, integrate our constant 1, we get x. So integration of ln x with respect to x equals uv, ln x times x. Now, Mistakes are made when some students have may have written ln x with x as ln x squared. Never do that. You cannot mix up that x with that x. So the safest thing is to put this x first. So we have x ln x, not ln x squared. Minus integration of the product of these two. x times 1 over x is the same as simply 1. So we end up with x ln x minus... Our integration of 1, which is just x, we have no limits on our original question. In other words, it's not a definite integration, so we end up with our arbitrary plus c. So the integration of ln x with respect to x is x ln x minus x. The reason I put that one down is because most people know the differentiation of ln x to be 1 over x. But the integration of ln x, we have to use parts by bringing 1 in, and we end up with x ln x minus x. Of course, if you had limits, you just put the limits in as normal. Okay, let's put on, go on to our third and final question. And you can see here, a little bit more challenging. We have got trigonometry involved, we've got a natural log involved, we've got sec x involved, we've got bounds involved so a lot more challenging but let's have a go at it so sine x ln sec x we've got an ln involved so it makes sense to define u with ln sec x which means dv dx being the other expression in this case sine x. Okay, don't panic on this one, du dx. Differentiation of ln sec x. Now, there may be a formula book in front of you, but if you forget how to differentiate an expression with ln x, here the best way to do is to differentiate sec x and put it over the bracket. So we have to differentiate ln sec x. We should know that the differentiation of sec x is sec x 
tanex and then you put it over the bracket and that's the quick way of differentiating an expression involving ln so you differentiate the bracket sec x which is sec x tan x and put it over the bracket sec x in this case sec x can cancel and we end up with tan x so the differentiation of ln sec x is tan x just in case you forget the rules and the formulas we can go for this process here here we need to establish what v is in other words integrate sine x which becomes negative cos x so let's begin our parts so integration of sine x ln sec x with respect to x equals uv so negative cos x ln sec x plus because there's a negative here so the two negatives will cancel and now I'm going to integrate cos x tan x with respect to x now this is the confusing bit what do I do here I wouldn't worry about the integration part yet. What you need to do is think about, is there a tidier way, a tidier expression of cos x multiplied by tan x? What we do know is that tan x is sin x over cos x. And multiplied by cos x, we can simply say that the expression cos x tan x is simply sin x. So, if we look at our next line, we have negative cos x ln sec x. That can be naturally brought down. Add the integration of sin x really important that you understood simplifying this expression cos x tan x to become simply sin x okay so let's go towards our final few lines we have so far negative cos x ln sec x plus the integration of sine x with respect to x. Okay, so we can drop this negative cos x, ln sec x. Integration of sine x is negative cos x. And I think that is now ready to plug in with our limits okay limits being pi over 3 and 0 okay let's just focus here for a bit because this is the confusing part of the expression we know cos of pi over 3 is half but what's ln sec x well we know sec x is 1 over cos x so if cos of pi over 3 is half then sec x or sec of pi over 3 must be 1 over half, in other words, 2. So we end up with negative half ln of 2 minus, back to cos x and back to minus half. And like before, before we put our lower limit in, always put a minus and an open bracket. We're now going to put 0 in. Now, cos of 0 is 1 so here we have 1 over cos x we end up with 1 over 1 ln of 1 is 0 
So in actual fact, when you put zero into this entire expression here, we end up with just zero. Minus zero in there, cos of zero is one. Really important about the zero being inputted here. Let's just finish this off. We have minus half, ln2, minus half, and we end up with plus one, negative and a negative. Tidying that up, we have negative half add one is half. So we can end up with half minus half ln2. And that should be the answer to that challenging question that we've just put there. Take time in absorbing the material and keep going through it. If you're not sure, keep going back to the videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.